Canadian Rally Championship 2021 season is just one event deep. Can't wait for the next event for sure. But now we're in full swing with the remaining five rallies all being completed in the next three months. Rally Day Fee is the second event on the calendar. Perfect condition, perfect uh, match, I think. And competitors need to stamp out their intentions on a title run. Do well here, and you're on your way. Stumble. I can't see. And you'll have a steep hill to climb. Hey, look. Easy, easy, easy. The pressure is on at the ultra fast. Ultra long. Ultra technical. Rally Day Fee. Mid-September weather in Le Petite Nation region of Quebec has presented perfect conditions for the second round of the Canadian Rally Championship, Rally des Filles. I think we have uh, lots of fun this weekend. Uh, perfect condition, the road is amazing, so uh, perfect uh, match, I think. Uh, after Bay, two years of no rally, and the result we've got, uh, one rally is not enough. So uh, definitely happy to be here. The road seems to be amazing in the Ricky yesterday, so uh, a nice weekend in view, yeah. To win here, you have to survive 21 demanding stages. The important thing for the 28 teams is to thrive on the stages they like and avoid massive losses on the stages they don't. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Confidence in motion. Leading the way are round one winners, Joel Levac and Lawrence Fanny Lestage. Their WRC spec car is definitely the class of the field in this national series. If they run their own race and steer clear of issues, they have a lock on the win. The opening stage is a two-headed monster, though. The opening half is very narrow but very fast, and the back half of the stage opens up, adding more technical jumps and turns to the equation. That means, right off the bat, the favorites are making time on the field. Second on the road are the LeBlanc brothers, Andre and René. Their Subaru has been built up over the last few years as they've improved. They're focused on staying ahead of the rest of the field, but a shifter problem causes distraction that almost ends in disaster. This is valuable time lost while chasing more powerful cars, made worse by a lack of high gear. It's a frustrating start to their day. especially with Mayu and Poirier directly behind them in their test racing WRX STI. This team is improving with every event they take on. Mayu was the rookie to watch not so long ago, and it's easy to imagine him in the winner's circle in the near future. Moreau and Guité are also looking strong on the opening stages with strong support by Team Swap Shop. They and their teammates, Clark and Marin, both have strong cars that should allow them to fight for a podium. For Clark, commitment isn't an issue. He comes out swinging and a close call almost ends his rally. subsequent mechanical failures sour his rally, eventually resulting in his retirement. The opening leg is full of surprises as the Drakes take a third place time on the opening stage. Their pace is undeniable, but it's a high standard to maintain. Behind them, Drake and DeGrosier are also looking strong early on, to the point where the usual contenders will have to pay attention. And while those guys punch high on the leaderboard, Brisebois and Demeray Trepignier and Garçon Toupin of Test Racing have decided to take it a little easier on the opening stages. There is a massive battle in two-wheel drive as well. 300. Americans Chris Greenhouse and Ryan Scott have come to take the win from the usual Canadian contenders. But before he can lay down the law, he gets hampered by a competitor in front of him. Six left. Don't oh. do this, you Come on. Go. I can't see. It's going to be a six left. 
100. Okay. Six left, stay in. 50, five right minus. He's going into the five right minus. They are bleeding time on a stage they expected to win. Martel retires at the end of the stage, leaving Greenhouse with massive time to make up. That opens the door for the rest of the two-wheel drive field. Belay and Millette are still fairly new to the national scene, but you wouldn't know it by their stage times. They punch the clock ninth fastest overall, leading two-wheel drive. If we weren't watching them before, we're watching them now. That puts past two-wheel drive champs Bailey and Peterson on notice. Same goes for Vanderpool and Lord. It's now a four-way battle for the two-wheel drive win. After three opening stages, Lebac commands the lead. Mayu second, then it's the Drakes rounding out the top three with the LeBlancs trailing Moreau in fifth. Belay leads two-wheel drive in ninth, 22 seconds up on Bailey. But we're just two stages into 21, and this leaderboard is going to dance. We're two stages and just shy of 40 kilometers into Rally Day Fee as the teams arrive at service before an uninterrupted leg of five stages runs out the day. Uh, lots of top speed, jump, and very uh, lots of rock, so you need the, 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 the car have uh, tough to have a good stability, but uh, we're running fast, and in the second pass, we uh, have a half a second of uh, a better in uh, each kilometer, so we are very, very happy. Ouais, ben, je, je te dirais que je voulais vraiment y aller euh, agressif au départ, puis euh, ça, ça a fonctionné parce que les autres ont eu des bris, fait qu'on a, on, on, on a quand même une petite avance, fait que ça va être bien. Continuer quand même sur un bon rythme, mais pas pousser pour rien, pas prendre de risques inutiles. Puis, euh, pour, pour le restant de la journée, puis on va voir comment ça va se terminer, puis on, on, on va rouler en conséquence demain là, sans, sans pousser trop fort. Là. Jérôme Mayou, c'est un bon ami, puis on, on a beaucoup de fun ensemble, on compare nos temps. Puis c'est vraiment à lui que je. Que on est pas mal la même force, euh, point de vue pilotage. Fait que c'est ses temps à lui que. Puis c'est lui que. Que, que je vise en amas de moi là, présentement. Là, je pense qu'il y a 35 secondes d'avance sur moi. Fait que, mais le rallye c'est long puis euh, j'espère d'aller les chercher. Uh, first pass, we go a little bit large on uh, one crest. I was uh, a little bit too fast and the call was a little bit late. So we almost uh, a disaster, but now it's okay. And on the second loop, we lose the turbo. I don't know why. Uh, now the guys at Swap Shop, they're changing the turbo. Right now we don't have the six speed and it was two really, really fast stage where you need your six speed. So not the perfect start of a rally, not the worst. We're gonna fix everything and uh, see how it goes. In two wheel drive, the American has good reason to be frustrated. First stage went very good. We put uh, some good time on our competition. Second stage, another car that had a turbo failure pulled out directly in front of us after being stopped for a while, filled the whole forest full of smoke and we just put it behind him for about half the stage. But here we are, now we gotta claw it back. We thought we were, we were doing pretty good, but our time sucked in comparison to the rest. We lost uh, half a minute on Jason Bailey. But I, I probably won't sleep tonight, but I will get over it. <laughs> no, no, I would be pretty embarrassed if I was him too. It was, cause I was, I was pot putting. We stopped and we uh, had a little espresso halfway through. And still beat him, I don't know why. Chris is fast. We can't keep up with Chris. We'll see how it goes for him. If he if he can keep that speed up and make it through the weekend without uh, finding any bushes, then he's going to win this race. We're just going to do ours. I'm going to stay as long as we stay ahead of win. I won't be too embarrassed. The second leg of stages includes multiple passes through a rock quarry. These shorter stages aren't where you win, but they can be where you lose. For Levac and Lestage, these stages don't change the game plan. A WRC car means you are faster on the long straights and faster in the corners. So they put down power to build a lead they can nurse tomorrow. Mayu and Poirier continue to look strong in second, keeping their stage times in the top five through the leg. They need to. 
because it's only 20 seconds back to Moreau and Guité, who are blazing fast and hot on their tails. This kind of pressure usually leads to disaster for the hunter or the hunted. The Drakes and Forth have been hammering their Subaru and pushing it to the limits. These opening stage times have been excellent, but away from the cameras, they will end up off the road. Commitment wins races, but it can also cost you one. The LeBlanc shifter issues continue, so they don't get to push full strength. But these guys are veterans of the series now, and they know if you can't outrun your competition, you have to outlast them. So that's their plan. With the Drakes out, Garçon and Tupin move up into fifth. They're running their own race and look strong so far, outpacing their teammates Brisebois and Demare Trepanier right behind them in sixth. In two-wheel drive, Greenhouse and Scott have put an inquiry to get their time revised, but they aren't waiting on the steward's decision. They push hard and begin to claw back the time they lost to their competition, up to second in class and into the top ten overall. They're outpacing Vanderpool and Lord in their Fiesta R2, and pushing Bailey and Peterson to the breaking point. Both Bailey and Peterson are okay, but we'll have to repair the car overnight and restart with some penalties. Belay doesn't follow suit. He and co-driver Millette continue a torrid pace, climbing up to seventh overall. They lead the class with more than 35 seconds in hand. At the top, Levac, Mayu, and Moreau haven't budged as the LeBlancs climb one step into fourth, setting up major battle lines for day two. The second round of the Canadian Rally Championship, Rally des Filles, has been action-packed so far. We can expect more of the same on this beautiful second morning as Levac and Lestage line up for the opening stage of the day. This event likes to start each day with big stages, and this opening set of four represent more than 80 kilometers of the event's 212 kilometer total. In short, these stages matter. A lot. For Levac, the pace is there. Their attention must remain on two key points. WRC cars don't like Sunday drives, so they must keep a steady and aggressive pace, but these stages are on the rougher side. Point number two, no matter how well your car is built, no matter how much thought is engineered in, you must have some mechanical sympathy. That second point goes for all the teams, like Mayu and Poirier. They have been on a very fast pace this weekend, and they have been able to separate themselves from the others because of it. But their lead isn't enough to back off. This leads to the question, how much risk is too much? It's the likes of Moreau and Guité that have prevented them from backing off, just 30 seconds behind. Moreau knows he's in a battle and these stages are where you win or lose the event. But Moreau breaks late into an early corner. His podium hopes end abruptly. Their off propels the LeBlancs into third even before they start the opening stage of the day. Andre is frustrated with the shifter in the car that is causing him to miss gears constantly. As they pass Moreau, they back off as their plan shifts to hold position on the podium. Garçon and Tupin move up into fourth, but only briefly because on the next stage, they park their car in the woods on a very fast section of stage. They're out. Fourth gets handed to their teammates, Brisebois and Demaray Trepanier. An outstanding position for a team that had a slow start to the rally. Drake and DeGrossier and their Subaru are having an up and down weekend. The first couple of stages this morning haven't gone great, but their pace on the second running of the loop has them climbing the leaderboard from 10th to 6th. In front of them is the two-wheel drive battle. Belay is still shining in his new role as class leader, but this three-horse race is anything but over. Vanderpool is still shaking off the rust, but it's just a few seconds off the lead, promising greater pace to come. 
and the American team of Greenhouse and Scott is flying with the extra horsepower on these opening fast stages. He's clawed back the time and then some, but the push isn't going to last. Okay, only got to make it another K. I got nothing. A motor mount bolt snaps, and he's left with none of that power getting to the gravel. We got anything at all? No, I think we broke a gearbox. It's gearbox internal. We're okay. We're really. All right, I'm gonna get out with the triangle. Okay. Yeah, I can't move. They are forced to retire, and they won't be alone. At the top of the leaderboard. Levac and Lestage have a four-minute lead on the field, but a broken drive shaft forces them to pull over. Eight crest. No. Go south. Go south. On spark U, on spark C. The retirements cause a massive shakeup on the leaderboard. Mayu and Poirier now lead. The LeBlancs inherit second. Brisebois third. The two-wheel drive battle occupies fourth and fifth place, which is impressive to say the least. Survival seems to be the key focus as the second half of the leaderboard aren't the usual names. And more trouble looms as third overall, Brisebois, arrives to service smoking. More after the break. It's been a dramatic morning at Rally des Fee, and it continues as Brisebois, currently third, has arrived at service trailing smoke, a signal that the leaderboard may change yet again. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Confidence in motion. The Mayu camp is calm, but just down the line, test racing is in a scramble to change a turbo in under 20 minutes. Ça a super bien été le deuxième passage. On a vu que Joël avait semblé avoir brisé sur le côté du de la route. Fait que là, on se retrouve en première position. Fait que on va prendre ce coup le premier zi, puis euh, les beaux stages s'en viennent. Là, fait que on va rester tranquille. Back with Brisebois in the test racing tent. Time is ticking and the car isn't ready to go. Yeah, I'm waiting. We have uh, two minutes before we go back and uh, the guys are swapping the turbo because we had uh, turbo issues uh, on the last stage. Uh, so we blew the turbo that actually burned the oil. We actually made it to the service, so my team is now working hard to be able to keep our third position. So it was one minute to go. So see, they're working like ants. <laughs> The chaos in their camp versus the laid-back nature over at the LeBlancs is striking. My driving style at the moment, I can't be aggressive, I, I'm not comfortable at all, so being second now, overall, with a very nice margin, I uh, will just finish the day like that, so I'm pretty happy, even if I can't really drive like I, I would like to. In good shape? Try it, try it, Luke. try it. I can't drive that way. I only no, do no, just try I mean, this is I don't know what. It's, just, it's, 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 it's automatic. <laughs> In two-wheel drive, Greenhouse's retirement relieves the pressure on Belay. Uh, it's only the second time we drive the car, first time on gravel. Uh, we had a bit of issues in the first stages, but now uh, everything seems to hold on, so uh, we're going to continue pushing and brake later, <laughs> accelerate faster, and uh, try to take the curve at the maximum speed uh, that we can. Back on the stages, Mayu hasn't slowed much, if at all. With the remaining stages all under 10 kilometers each, the final 10 stages aren't likely to change the leaderboard unless undue risk is taken. Mayu clears the opening two without issue. The LeBlancs aren't as lucky. They've discovered their racing engine is damaged. They have over seven minutes on third place, so the duo backs it down and attempts to limp through the remaining stages. If they can survive, they can be in the hunt for a title. They aren't the only ones fighting engine trouble. Test racing service thrash hasn't paid off. Brisebois is limping and won't make it to the end of the stage. Their retirement lifts Drake and DeGrossier into fifth overall. A great result for the duo who have had their own gremlins to battle, but ultimately found a strong balance between speed and survival. In two-wheel drive, LaRose and Peasant steered clear of all dangers. Still very early in their rally careers, they have managed a top 10 finish. At bay, they were learning. Today, they clearly showed the education paid off. 
They managed to outlast series favorites Bailey and Peterson, who have charged back after their day one off. And that's what you'll find on this final leaderboard. Teams who would have been considered unlikely for a top 10 finish. The ultimate example being longtime stalwart Jim Stevens. Proving that effort and endurance are half the keys to success, today he's in the top 10. The battle for the top of two-wheel drive has been a fun one to watch this weekend. For Wim Vanderpool, second place is a great return to the sport. He'll be a handful out west. But there was no match for Belay and Millette. Proof that often, simpler is better. Stock gearbox, stock engine, top level suspension. They'll be contenders at every rally they enter. First in two wheel drive, third overall. A dream result for this budding team. In front of them, the LeBlanc brothers managed to nurse the car to the end. Easy throttle, flashers on, their buffer to third was immense and it allowed them to hold on. That leaves Mayu and Poirier with dominance in their first national win. Another notable result for this young team. They take the win by over eight minutes. Goes to show you just how tough this rally was. The LeBlancs take second, Belay third and the two-wheel drive victory in what was one of the wildest final leaderboards this series has seen in years. It begs the question, who will show up in a few weeks to the Rocky Mountain Rally? Who will put together a championship challenge? With Pacific Forest Rally canceled due to forest fires and COVID restrictions, it's anyone's guess. But the shortened western leg should clear up who's truly making moves. But for now, it's relief of one tough event being completed. Ben, honnêtement, c'est ça, on pense, je pensais pas qu'on allait aussi bien rouler, fait que j'ai dit qu'on allait on allait faire plus attention, sauf que faut quand même garder un bon tempo là si, euh, si on veut garder de la concentration, là, fait que on a roulé, euh, je pense qu'on a roulé correct, puis on, on a bien fini, puis je suis bien, je suis bien content de nos, nos deux journées de rallye. After the first stage, when I went off plus my shifter problem, the real goal was more like fourth overall than second overall. Uh, unfortunately, we have some friends uh, who be in DNF, so uh, finishing second overall at the rally with eighth stage with a blown head gasket plus my shifter problem is just an amazing how you need to finish an event, stay out of bigger problem is really important. We didn't expect to go on the national podium. Uh, Danny and me, since we're young, we dream about doing rallies. So beginning uh, and having a podium fast like that, it's uh, above our expectations. So uh, we couldn't wish a, a better scenario for today. The champagne flies, but all thoughts are focused on the Rocky Mountain Rally in just a few weeks. The next exciting round of the Canadian Rally Championship.